It is such an honor to come speak to you all. Um, I thought I would start off just by introducing myself and telling you all a little bit about how I got into medicine. It was not a traditional route. And I want to give you guys some encouragement that if you don't know what you want to do right now, that's totally okay because when I was in your shoes, I, I literally swore that I would never go into medicine. And that is the truth. So who am I? My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger. I am double board certified in internal medicine and obesity medicine. I just got certified in obesity medicine not that long ago. I have multiple roles and I'll sort of tell y'all in order of importance. So first of all, I, I'm a Christian. I'm a wife to Matt and I've been a wife to him since 1999. I also am a mother to four children, Olivia, Will, John, and Matthew. I currently, like I said, am an internal medicine physician and I work for a community clinic and I've worked for them since 2006 and I work part-time. I also have a YouTube channel, um, Your Health with Dr. Christie, and I started that right during COVID. So it's been going about three years and I have about 160,000 subscribers and I'm, I've enjoyed it more than I thought that I would. But my journey to medical school was not traditional. So I'm gonna start off with a question that, true or false, you have to be pre-med in college to get into medical school. That's false. I grew up in Austin and I graduated from Anderson High School. I went to Vanderbilt University for one semester and it wasn't a good fit and so then I transferred to TCU and I graduated summa cum laude with a communication psychology degree and a minor in Spanish. I took biology for non-science majors. That's how clear I was that I was not gonna do anything in medical school or do anything in medicine. I remember the professor on the first day standing up and saying, if you are even thinking about going to medical school or even thinking about doing anything in the medical field, this is not the class for you. <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm not, so I'm cool. After I graduated, I moved to Washington, D.C. When I moved to Washington, D.C., I continued to work in the political arena for about five years. So I wanted to get my Ph.D. and teach college level in communications, and I applied to multiple programs, and I was rejected from them all. <laughs> So then I started volunteering at George Washington University Hospital in their neurosurgical unit, and I worked with an incredible nurse, and the Lord started tugging on my heart. And I just remember one night I was helping her clean bedpans, and she was like, honey, why don't you think about going to medical school? And I, that was really kind of the first time that I even imagined myself doing that. I was unhappy in the political arena that wasn't a good fit for me. And so true or false, once you start working, you can't go back to medical school. False, that's right. So I expressed my concern about possibly wanting to go to medical school and my mom was instrumental. And she said, I know about this really interesting program called a post-baccalaureate pre-medical program at Bryn Mawr College. And I got in and I deferred twice. They called me and I, I mean, this is back before texting or I mean, we barely had email. So they would call and I got in and I said, I'm not ready. And I got in a second time and I was like, I'm still not ready to go. I, I just was so scared about going to medical school about how long it was going to take and about whether that was something that I really was being called to do and I was praying and praying and praying. I did it. I, it was a one-year program where I did all of the sciences that I had refused to do in college in one year. So I did biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, and physics and it was awful. Um, but my co the, the people that were there with me, we were all it was such an interesting mix. There was a former Navy SEAL, there were a lot of lawyers, <laughs> um, and there were people that had been in a career that just didn't suit them, and they wanted to go back and do something else, and it was a fascinating group. Being at Bryn Mawr College was fascinating because it's an all-girls college in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, but they allow other schools to come on campus to to take classes there so that's how I was able to do that and the classes were incredible I actually loved organic chemistry it was one of my favorite classes it was taught by 
the most incredible professor. Now, true or false, you have to take the MCAT to get into medical school. That's false. What? So in my post-baccalaureate pre-medical program, that was what was so interesting about it, is that if you did well in this post-baccalaureate pre-medical program for a year, there were certain universities that they had relationships with, medical schools, and they, you wouldn't have to have a glide year where you would take the MCAT and apply, but you had to be okay with the particular schools. There was probably 10 schools. A lot of them were in the Northeast, and um, one of them was the University of Rochester. So I decided to go to the University of Rochester, but remember, Matt and I were still dating, so we were dating long distance, okay? True or false, once you're in medical school, you can't transfer. That's false. So I uh, completed my first year of medical school at the University of Rochester, and then I transferred. I transferred to Georgetown University, but I did that because I got engaged and Matt and I eventually married. So I did one, my first year at University of Rochester and then I transferred. Okay, so. True or false, medicine is the perfect career for women and for men. True, true. that is true. Um, I think medicine has gotten a bad rap. I want to just open your horizons and have y'all think about, there are, you do not have to just be a physician. There are so many choices um, that you can do. I, I kind of tried to, to do it by the level of education that you need. Um, having, being a physician, you need four years of college, four years of medical school, and three plus years of residency. And then if you go on to do a fellowship, like in cardiology, which is the heart, nephrology, which is the kidney, nurse practitioner, certified nurse anesthetist, physician's assistants, all you need a four-year college degree. And then after that, you tend to get a master's degree in that, those particular fields. Speech pathology, physical therapist, occupational therapist, Speech pathology it would be another great field, and there are some colleges that specifically allow you to get an undergrad degree in that, and then that step stones you into a master's degree, but you don't have to particularly do that. Um, you could get an undergrad degree and then decide you wanted to get a master's degree in speech and language pathology. Occupational therapists tend to do fine motor movements, and physical therapists tend to do large motor movements, and then registered nurses also. And there are some colleges where if you know you want to be a registered nurse, in four years, you can come out with a registered nurse's degree, which is an incredible way also to jumpstart a medical career. The, another reason why I think medical careers are so wonderful is in my experience, that's what I was longing for when I was slogging away in the White House um, and working for a political consulting firm. I felt like, gosh, I want to be in a career that where I feel like I can tangibly make, tangibly make a difference in someone's life. And I prayed and prayed and prayed about it, and that has been the greatest gift for me. Because y'all, the interactions that I have with patients are, I really consider them, they're sacred, they're deep, they're very intentional. Patients tell me things that they have not told anyone else. I feel like in our world that's growing more and more disconnected, to have someone have a safe space where they can really be honest and with me, or with someone, it's a really meaningful job. I, I do feel like I make a difference in people's lives. It's also high paying. And my husband was like, you need to tell him what that means. So high paying, if I were, I work part time, but if I were to work full time, I would say 200,000 to $500,000 a year, um, depending on the specialty that you're in. I have flexible hours and if you, depending on what field of medicine you go into, you can work shift work, you can work just during the day, sometimes you're on call. There are some fields that are more intense. Like I knew, I loved orthopedic surgery, especially of the hand. I thought it was fascinating. But I knew that in my path, that was gonna be a hard career for me to work part-time. So you, if you decide, women and men, if you wanna work part-time, that's great, but there are certain fields of medicine that I would steer you away from. Medical careers are valuable because it, you get a professional degree with a specific skill set. It's also recession proof that you're always in need. And there's a field really for any type of personality and fields do have personalities. So internal medicine tend to be 
uh, anal retentive and very details oriented and not very funny. Pediatricians tend to be very lighthearted, funny, very kind because they're, they're helping parents with the most beloved thing in their life at a really scary time. OBGYNs, male OBGYNs are hilarious and funny and very lighthearted. Female OBGYNs tend to be uh, pretty serious. Uh, orthopedic surgeons tend to be jocks. Anesthesiologists tend to be lighthearted and um, they don't usually like deep uh, ongoing patient interactions because they just pe put people to sleep. Pathologists tend to be antisocial. I say that with t tongue in cheek. Uh, radiologists also tend to like to work with colleagues uh, more than patients because they're reading MRIs and CAT scans and they're not having patient interaction, but they're instrumental in helping provide care for patients with the f other physicians that are on the team. So they tend to work with other physicians more with patients. Do y'all have any questions about medicine or about my road to medicine?